Hello, happy Wednesday. I'm excited to have another Power Up conversation. Um, my name is Lisa Solomon, for those of you who are joining. I am really excited today to talk to Sam Littman from BLT Recruiting and discuss um, kind of what's happening in the job market today. As you know, a lot of people are looking for jobs and um, want to talk really about what are the challenges and the opportunities right now for those of you interested in a new job. Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I was just doing a little introduction. I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. I'm really excited to talk to you because I think people, you know, are curious about, you know, what's happening right now in terms of, you know, career growth, career opportunities for those people in advertising, marketing, media, and all of the sort of roles that are around that. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I really want to help people and give people advice and, and share a little bit about your background as well. And um, just happy that you're here. I think one of the things that I always <laughs> so talk about. I, so am I. Um, what I always talk about when I have these conversations is, is like how I know people. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty fortunate and that I have a really great network. And yeah. I always tell people, you never know, you know, sort of that six degrees of separation and how you're going <laughs> to know people and see people. So for those people who are joining, um, when I was in college, a freshman year at UC Santa Barbara, Sam's sister, Heather, was my roommate. And it's small just so, world, small I know, world. It's so crazy. And then, you know, all these years later, here we are in the same industry and our, you know, paths are crossing in a variety of different ways. And yeah. I just think it goes to show you, you never know in life, you know, how things are going to um, connect and how you're going to meet people and, and re-see them again. So yeah. network My grandmother is always said, if you leave yourself open, things will come. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, and it's funny because I remember, I mean, I'm, I remember meeting you like a long time when yeah. in college. And I'm just curious, you know, how did your career get to where you are today and involved in, you know, recruiting specifically in this sort of the ad marketing industry? Or is it more than that? I don't know. I'm assuming it is that. Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, I think back and I think I was, I was very lucky. Um, I always knew communication was something that came easy to me and something that I always wanted to learn more about. Um, and so when I went to school, I went to school um, undergraduate for um, communications at USC. And I, back then, dating myself, you could, you could get a a temp job and you could go to a temp agency and you could work at, yeah. a, at a company and you could, you know, maybe work your way up. And I, um, funny enough, I temped at a company called Davis Ball and Columbato. Oh yeah. Where Susan Franceschini, who is on, I think now was yes. my then, um, you know, boss and I, I worked on the phones and and I always knew that HR or something within that was really exciting to me. Talking to people, conflict resolution, and it kind of evolved from there. Um, I loved the recruiting process. I loved kind of that matchmaking of talent. Um, finding people that um, somebody would describe to me and then I could kind of find that person and match those two things yeah. up and it just evolved and I started um, my own uh, recruiting company after trials and tribulations within the market and um, had that for a number of years until I came across BLT Recruiting and really wanted to grow as an individual, not only just in recruiting, but in some of the consulting capabilities that I have. And so now, um, the beginning of 2020, uh, 29, and in 2019, just in time for the pandemic, I took over BLT Recruiting, and <laughs> we now have a team of seven, and we're doing fabulous things. And I'm beyond excited in a very difficult time 
I find that I'm challenged to learn and to grow and to continue to reinvent myself and ask myself those hard questions, um, which I think is exciting. I mean, listen, in a time when we can't see people all the time, I get to talk to people all the time. And I think you and I were talking about this yesterday, getting to learn from people that we wouldn't normally talk to or having those encounters that we wouldn't normally have. And I think that's, that's what makes it fun. That's I totally fun. agree. I am so with you on that. I love meeting people. And it's funny because when I think through my career, recruiters have been so critical. I don't think I've ever gotten a, a position that did not involve having a recruiter my whole career. And yeah. on the other side, you know, when I was hiring, you know, I was at Microsoft. I had a team of 100 people. When we were hiring. The recruiter was so instrumental in, you know, my business and in, in terms of hiring and finding the right people and that ability to match make and sift through to find that right person. It's such an incredible role and something that's really valuable. How has it been a challenge right now for you, given that, you know, where we are today? You know, I think that's really interesting. And I think my role as a recruiter is very much evolved um, because people are, are creating new roles, they're trying to pivot. Um, and, and sometimes they don't, you know, I just talked to a client this morning, sometimes they don't know the exact job they are defining, they may have a title for it. But as we communicate about that, as we kind of address their needs one on one, we get to have leeway with what it is that they're looking for. And so I think before people really function within a defined role, now they're opening their eyes and their ears up to, open, to ways that they can grow as a company. Um, they're looking in different markets that they've never looked at before. Yeah. We're strategic looking at how, strategically looking at how teams grow. Um, and we're instrumental in that. And that's one role that recruiters play um, in, in at BLT recruiting, but it's also a very high level role that not all recruiters actually do get to play. And that's one of the places that I, I feel that I really connect with as an individual. And I think our team at BLT really connects with as a company, but we get to be a part of the process. And I think that has really been a shift since the pandemic. People are more interesting, interested to hear what we know what's happening out there, um, what the market is doing, um, and really how we can be a part of their growth, not just on a single job role, but <clears throat> I can't tell you how many roles that we placed recently and the position has kind of changed. Wow. And, and I think everybody is looking at themselves or looking at their companies um, in a much more strategic way. And I think if you can get there, this is a time for you to make leaps and bounds. Now, would you say that when you, you know, the roles you get to a, and the roles change, is it because the agency or the company itself is having to make so many different pivots and changes? So they have to kind of rethink roles and teams and, and what they're doing? Or is it, you know, I'm just curious, what are some of the factors that, that drives some of that bigger change? I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said they're having to relook at things. Um, I think that, you know, we have, we have clients that were totally theatrical clients and that business has changed. Yeah, and so obviously. they're having to become more integrated. And in doing so, they maybe would want somebody to come in and do digital social, but then they realize that this person has to really help the company overall integrate. And so looking at how they can utilize either a smaller staff, utilize the people that they have already there, and, and make that shift in how they can upsell some of the clients that they currently have. Um, and also redefine how business is really playing a part in their growth. Um, because it's not a year has made an enormous yeah. change. And we see that time and time again. And so it's a really interesting process. 
because we help our clients understand, well, this is what we see other places. This is how we can help you. Maybe you should rethink about the role and rethink about what somebody with this skill set could actually bring to the table. It's been fascinating. And I think it's been fascinating for both the client. And I think it's really exciting for the candidate because the candidate is really thinking about themselves in a whole new way and what they can bring to the table from not only their background, but from an entrepreneurial perspective. And I, I think, think that's, that's so exciting, you know, to be able to go in. I mean, personally, I, I love this idea that when you start in a role, you're not pigeonholed into this box, right? That you know that you're going to have this opportunity to grow and learn new skills and do other things. Like, I think that that makes it more exciting really for everyone that you're willing to kind of pivot, see, you know, how is the business changing and what's, how can you both the company and the person who joins that team grow? And it gives you a lot more opportunities, I think, just from a career growth point of view. Yeah, you know, it brings to mind so many different ideas for me and and ways to give people advice about in this time because there are so many people looking for jobs there are so many people looking to pivot but part of that pivot is about reinvention and reinvention of who you are reinventing what your skill sets are and and using that to your benefit using that to define yourself above and beyond who you've ever defined yourself as before. And thinking about what those tools are that you have in your toolbox that you maybe haven't used in a while. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, I was having this conversation this morning that we're very stuck into this day over day over day doing a lot of the same thing. And a way to get out of that is to push yourself, to find ways to shake up your routine, to find ways to shake, to push yourself outside your comfort zone and who you connect with via LinkedIn, how you present yourself um, to a hiring manager. What is it that you want to be perceived as? And I think everybody needs to kind of do some self-reflection um, more than ever because people want people that are entrepreneurial and the best way you can be that way is be that way for yourself, be yeah. your own advocate, um, push for what you want, have a voice about who you are and where you see yourself and, and, and make that known throughout Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, so that people are seeing you in the same light you want to be seen in. I think that is such great advice. I mean, it's almost like we all have this opportunity to rebrand ourselves. You know, I like, do. Yeah, like there, there is that opportunity. I was just having this conversation with somebody who was thinking about, you know, who, what is the, it's, she called herself, it was my friend Trudy, and she was like, I need to figure out who Trudy 2.0 is. <laughs> and, and I feel it like we all whole, do. I know, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? It's true. It's like, how awesome is it that we have all these different pivots and phases of our lives? And I think that, you know, a pandemic has given us an opportunity to really have time to think about, you know, are we where we want to be? And if we're not, what are the things that we need to do to take it to that next level to, you know, get yourself to whatever your yeah. 2.0 or whatever that, re, you know, the version of yourself is? Well, there is an element of being stuck. Um especially if you've been furloughed or especially if you've um, been searching for a job for a long time. And my advice is to think outside the box. I mean, don't necessarily look for jobs that are only in one, you know, title. Think about, think about and imagine what, what you could do or what you want to do. And, and, bridge that gap by by exposing your talents and and exposing what you know of your talents and and i think we can do that very easily and i think that's shaking up our daily routine and you know 
so many people don't know how to network. So many people don't know how to reach out to others. Everybody is struggling for time right now, yeah. but everybody wants to help someone. And you never know in what form that help can come. And we help in any way we can by mentoring people. We have um, affiliates that we're working with to, to help bridge this gap or give advice or, you know, in any capacity. And I think that you need to take the first step in saying, okay, I may have been stuck, but now's my time to, to try to reinvent what I know myself as who I was to somebody that I want to become in this very difficult time. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting is what you're talking about, you know, in terms of having to do some reflection. I think that we also underestimate how much we actually know or the work that we've done, how impactful and how that can be used to parlay yourself into something else. Like yeah. we assume sometimes that what we do everyone knows how to do but really honestly a lot of times that's not really the case that is you know you have specialized skills or talents or you we all have our sort of like superpowers yeah but really that idea to figure out what is that how do i then pitch that to other people how do i get people to realize that becomes so powerful because people you know it's when i hire people i always look for how is that person going to help me even be better than, you know, and give me something that I don't know. And I think we underestimate what our unique value is and how much we know, you know, yeah. I think we sometimes take that for granted. And I think that's such an important part of trying to figure out who you, you know, there's gaps as well. In terms yeah. Of how you fill those in. Well, I think that when somebody says, what do you do or who, what do you have to offer? we're not always prepared for that. And I think having that, you know, everybody needs their elevator pitch and everybody yeah. needs to know their story because if you're not prepared, you, you'll fumble and fall. And every opportunity you have to show someone who you are, you should be presenting your best self. And when you're doing that, you should have, and I always tell this to candidates, no what you offer someone know what yeah. you bring to the table and know how to define that and if you have that down if you know that story in your head you're going to be so much more successful and if you retell that story and believe let it embody you that's that's critical for owning it and it's as much telling it as it is it coming out of you and i think that's you know we all have to be prepared for anything these days. Zoom calls when they're not expected, mm -hmm. making sure that you're dressed appropriately, making sure that you're presenting yourself in the way you want to see others be presented. Um, and, and I think you being prepared and, and writing down those things to keep you posting them on your computer, posting them on your yeah, computer, absolutely. who do I want to be? What am what are my goals for today? Keep, keep keep engaged and keep motivated to go after what you want and know that every day may seem the same, but it can be different. Yeah, absolutely. I just I wanted to laugh when you said about being presentable on Zoom because oh I God. I mean I, I swear to God I haven't worn pants that zipped in probably a year. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily people always see the top of you anyway. But it is it is a pet peeve of mine. I will tell you when I when I'm doing an interview with someone and they are have their cat on their lap, their hair is on a bun on the top of their head, and they're not prepared. Because I think you know we have to be prepared in any situation, Absolutely. and we always have to be presentable, even if it's a conversation, a casual conversation, um, or not. Uh, you know, even if I have clients that are wearing you know, hats on backwards, they are allowed to do that. I'm, I'm the person that I feel that needs to be presentable and I will always try to be that way. Yeah, me so, too. I, I, I don't feel comfortable if I'm not like putting on, so, you know, that I, I, anyways, I feel better when I look presentable, period. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a confidence boost. I mean, you don't, you, wanna, you have to look back at yourself. So, 
Um, you know, and the same goes for your LinkedIn profile. If you want to be taken seriously, make sure you present yourself in a, in a manner that people look at you that way. Your profile picture matters. How you write about yourself matters. There's people that can help you with that. Um, you know, you put out there what you're going to get back in return. And um, now it's harder than ever. But I feel like in, in even a pandemic, BLT recruiting has redefined who we are. We have a new brand. We have a new mission statement. We have a new website. We have new social media. You can push through this. And, and I, I am always that person that looks at a glass half full versus half empty. Yeah, me too. And, and each day, you know, um, is a way to create something new or even connect to someone new. And um, even if it's small goals, I think we can attain them. Absolutely. And, and I think right now, you know, building a network and connecting. Yes. In some ways, it's never been easier because there's so many incredible opportunities. Like, you know, I do lunch club. I'm in a uh, startup incubator, you know, for founders, and I meet all kinds of people that way. Yeah. I've done a global sort of lunch called club called Nomad, K N O M K N O M A D. I, you know, so I'm always like, you know, and I feel like people are more interested in talking than ever before as well because we are so isolated in some ways, but the great thing is, is, you know, you can talk to people anywhere in the world and connect. And I think there's just yeah. such an opportunity there, but you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And I think it also becomes easier when you do the work and you have that elevator pitch and you're very clear yes. on what it is you do, what is your value that you offer for other people. And on the flip side, what do you want? from other yeah. people, right? Like, what is that reciproc Absolutely. reciprocal sort of value that you can do? And, you know, I actually hired somebody to redo my resume and help me create different styles of narratives, you know? Yeah. And they all say the same thing, but different ways so that I can mix and match depending on who I want. And just somebody who was better putting the words together than I yeah. was. Yeah, I mean... And I feel so empowered now. Like, I feel like anything that comes my way, I have a way <laughs> to respond, yes. whether it's paragraph bullets, you know, I've got all these like different ways to mix and match. And I will tell you, it's probably one of the best investments I've made because there's nothing like, and I think sometimes we don't put ourselves out there because we're afraid someone's going to want yeah. something and we're not going to be prepared for it. Yeah. Prepared is I think a key word here is like, you know, you're prepared now and, and just, that little bit empowered you so much. And, you know, I, I want to mention something too about networking. Networking doesn't just have to be with people that you want to work for. There's a huge amount of networking, and you just mentioned that, uh, that you can do with people that are in the same situation that you're mm -hmm. in. There are so many people that can have on their profile on LinkedIn, say, looking for work. You can look at those people and say, hey, uh, maybe we can network. Maybe we can talk about what you're doing. Maybe we can, you know, get to know one each other. There's ways to engage in conversation that keeps um, your brain going. And so that you can make dates about, you know, there's a lot of very senior level people that are not working. Can exactly. I pick your brain about what you did? I'm looking at getting into this field they want to keep their brains going too. There is, there is networking with like-minded people or aspirational people that should really be something that you do now as well as the people that you want to work for. And, and I think, you know, looking at, I love that idea of this. There's, you know, there's so many, there are a lot of different people out of work. And I know there are times when, you know, you feel like, well, if I'm out of work, there must be something wrong with me kind yeah. of thing. And that's not the case. No, not you at know, all. Especially right now. And so that people shouldn't feel afraid to have those conversations because I swear to God, most people I've talked to love to connect. People yeah. want this. They want to have a way to you know, and most people want to help each other. And I think that's one of the things, one of the things I actually really love about the industry that we're in as well. Yeah. You know, it is the six degrees of, so it's a very tight knit people. A lot of people know the same people and that 
just helps. And I think generally people want to help each other. Yeah, they really do. And I think they welcome it. And you shouldn't be discouraged by it. You just have to keep trying. Um, people, people really are in new territory now and they don't necessarily know how to navigate, but I can't tell you how many people that I've just connected to say, you know what, you guys should talk. You should talk about what you do, what you do. You never know where it can take you. And, and some of the most senior people are so welcoming to that and so yeah. happy to do that. And we're at a time where people want to, connect more than ever and and hear what you're doing or getting advice and and everybody's story is different and even if you are an executive it doesn't mean you've been in this unemployed game before and and everybody's vulnerable and everybody um is learning from it and so be sensitive and caring and expose yourself because the more you make yourself vulnerable and ask those questions the more you will get i just had this conversation this morning actually about vulnerability and about how hard it is but how rewarding it is it's like it's so you, rewarding it's so fascinating it's just the fear and there's no doubt about it you know because i was talking to some guys that i had done a podcast with and it was a very vulnerable experience and i told them that when it was over I said, you know, I kind of felt like crying. Like I needed to, like I was. <laughs> it's cathartic. It, it was. It brings out all these emotions. Yeah. And they said that they, that as on the flip side, because they do a lot of these, they said that there have been times when they were just like emotionally spent from them. And it just, but the fact that I was willing to be more vulnerable and more authentic made the whole experience yeah. better. But I, well, I'll tell you, it is not easy. It was really, really tough. No, but it's, it's you know people are curious by nature and um they want to see something that they can connect to so that they feel that they there's an openness to be able to be curious and the more vulnerable you are and honest and come from a place of integrity i mean i'm a question asker I have been my whole life. They call, so them am bubby, I. they call them bubby questions. My grandma would ask anybody any question and not like, well, I don't know. It's just a question. Why? And I think that's why I'm a good recruiter is because I ask those questions nobody else ever really wants to ask. And who said, how would you ever think of asking that question? That's I, like, awesome. I don't know. I just <laughs> ask the question. I love getting to know people. And so it's, it's mm. funny, but I think that the curiosity is, you know, who doesn't want to be asked about themselves? Yes, it's so true. And who doesn't want to, in some way, shape, or form, talk about themselves? So if you're asking, come to the table with smart and intelligent questions, people want to engage with you. And people want, and, and, and that takes you on this path of getting to know someone and creating those relationships that you didn't know you possibly could have. And, you know, just like you and I, you know, we didn't know where this would take us, but here yeah. we are. And, and keeping yourself open to those experiences is now more important than ever. And I would say, you know, it's interesting because it's, we always look forward to who we don't know, but I also think there's so much power in going to those that we do know who we haven't yeah. talked to in a long time. Like I talked yesterday to somebody um, in Atlanta who I worked at Microsoft with like, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. And we hadn't talked, you know, since the early 2000s and we reconnected and I thought, oh my God, this is so fun. And it's like, no yeah. time goes by. And so when we look through and think about not only who can we, you know, meet new, but who can we, you know, who's in this network of people we just haven't talked to. And I will tell you most people, I've never had anyone that I've reached out to or reached out to me who said, no, I don't want to re-engage. Of course no, they do. Never. And that's the other thing. It's just it's sort of nurturing the network. Yeah. And, and it is really fun to like reconnect with people you haven't talked to in a really long time. It's the best. It's amazing. And, and even, you know, sometimes I may not know that person, but I know somebody that knows that person. Can you introduce me to them? 
Yes. And don't forget about that because that's just important as you knowing that person directly, but we're all here to help connect people and um, use those resources, take advantage of those resources and, and reinvent that process for yourself and how you go about it. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting because as a recruiter, you are the ultimate connectors, like you were saying at yeah. the very beginning. You <laughs> guys are like matchmakers, right? It is. It is exactly yeah. the same thing. <laughs> I, I love it. And, and it's like, and, it, and it's what I really enjoy about what I get to do. And I, and I really get to help people. And I know they don't always, everybody doesn't always see it that way, but we were talking as a team about that Indeed commercial on the Super Bowl. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we get, we're lucky. It's not always easy. We don't always get mm -hmm. to find the right person, but when we get to, we get to help change lives and we get to help change company infrastructure. And, um, and there's something really gratifying about that. And I think that's why I've probably done it my whole career. Um, and, you know, I might be, wasn't the best always at dating, but I'm a much better recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is so funny. It's so true. I can totally see that. Maybe but I ask too many questions and they're like, who is this girl? But I don't know. I just, I get to, um... you know. And, and I think that, um, you know, reach out, reach, just reach out. Yeah, it's, reach out. it's true. I always tell myself every day, you know, what's the worst that can happen, right? And you just got to push yourself past that. Like, if you feel uncomfortable, it's all the more reason to do it. Yes. I was just going to say that the more you're in outside of your comfort zone, the more you're growing. Exactly. It's so true. And I, I get scared. I woke up this morning, like I had two new business calls before this, and then I've never done a live Instagram and, and, but, you know, full of energy for it and excited yeah. to be in a space that I wasn't comfortable. So I can continue to grow into that, you know, as I evolve. Yeah. And the fun thing is, it's really, I mean, it's, it's really it's like a easy. conversation. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's like the best thing I've discovered. And I, I look forward to it now. I mean, I get a little nervous because I'm like, oh my God, what if I stumble or whatever? But like, yeah. I would say I really look forward to because I always think, and I've, I've thought this for a while now, is I have all these amazing, interesting conversations. And I like, I learned something. Oh my yeah. God, if I only recorded it, I could help other yeah. people. And really that was kind of the impetus to it because I feel so fortunate that I've you know, founded a company that's all about crowdsourcing knowledge. Yes. Well, what's a great way to do that, but then to have conversations with people who all have something to give and something to share because, you know, and that's what's so fun about it. And I learn something new or I'm inspired by what people have to say. And then it, like the rest of my afternoon will be so much better because I will think about either what you said or what I said about yeah. our comfort zones and not, you know, you stop yourself from doing the things you know you should be doing because of all the stuff that goes on in your head, right? Yes. yes. And then it's just like having a conversation with somebody who says, I can do this. Yeah. We're our own worst critics. And, yeah. and another thing I say to myself is just a thought, it's not reality. Yeah. And, you know, push through it because what's going on in your head doesn't necessarily mean that's what other people are thinking. Oh, and, yes. And so the more you get outside that, the more you feel that uncomfortableness, the more you'll be able to get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been so fun. I'm so glad you did this. It's like 1234. So oh. I want to be sensitive of your time. Okay. Well, um, thank you. This was how wonderful. How can people find you? You know, if they're interested in finding out more about you, about BLT recruiting, how you can, can you? email me at Samantha at BLT Recruiting. You can go to our site, bltrecruiting.com. We're excited. We're doing some new stuff. So watch out. We're, we're going to be launching a consultative piece of our business. Oh, that's um, awesome. And we're just really pushing the envelope in 2021. Um, we're excited that we're busy. And, and we just want to, you know, be there as that amazing connection and resource for people. So 
I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Thanks Thank for saying so all that. Much. Thank you. It was awesome. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. bye.